All right, everyone. Thanks again for uh, joining. Uh, it is noon now, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I am Daniel. I'm an inside systems engineer here at Veeam, um, and I've uh, been here for about, I don't know, seven, eight months. Um, new to the company, but not the product. I was also an M user, just like yourself, um, you know, for about seven or eight years using this product backup and replication. So uh, very familiar with it. Uh, when it comes to the recovery, you know, I think that's where Veeam really shines. Um, I cover the commercial Southeast region. So if you're in the Southeast in the commercial plane, you might have me as an SD during a, a demo. Uh, so uh, if any of this looks interesting to you uh, throughout this 30 minutes, um, you know, please reach out to your reseller or vendor um, to get a demo scheduled and get a kind of a, a deeper, uh, you know, deeper demo and, and get more technical with it if need be. But um, have a quick little PowerPoint we're going to go through here. Then I'm going to jump into um, the actual our demo lab environment and show you the product and uh, basically really just hit a, a little harder on how we can recover uh, our data whenever it, it comes time to restore um, from your backup file. So what we have really seen in 2021 when it comes to customer challenges is, of course, uh, zero tolerance for uh, downtime and data loss. So uh, we can really do this with using our continuous data protection policy, um, leveraging you know, VMware and all of that stuff. You're able to use that CDP policy to get up to a two second um, RPO when it comes to uh, real-time replication. Uh, here with uh, keep, keeping backup data safe from uh, ransomware. So uh, there's a few ways that Veeam can help uh, protect and give you confidence back in restoring. Uh, one way we can protect against it is we can leverage the immutability option on, you know, S3 compatible buckets, um, Linux hardened repositories, um, all of that stuff. So, you know, if you, you have any of that in your environment or uh, you're going to add that stuff into your environment and you're, you want to leverage a backup solution um, that, you know, can leverage that immutability to send those backup files as an object lock to those repositories, you know, Veeam can definitely meet that requirement. Um, and again, with that object lock, you get that worm scenario, which is that write once, read many, which will protect you from ransomware. A couple of other ways, uh, we have something called Sure Backup, uh, which basically takes a restore point, spins it up in a virtual environment called Data Lab, and it runs certain tests behind it, checks the OS files, it, it'll do some ping tests to make sure that you can connect to it. Uh, so again, give you that confidence back, um, you know, inside of when it comes time to restore. And also we have something called Secure Restore. And whenever you are going through the Restore Wizard, um, it is an option there to turn it on. And this basically scans the OS files and any other volumes attached to that VM that you're restoring. Um, it, it'll scan it with the onboard antivirus that's installed on there. Um, it'll check it to find any malware you can abort the recovery or continue the recovery, you know, and um, just, just uh, disconnect the network adapters. So, uh, again, there's a lot of things that we can do to protect and give you that confidence when, when it comes time to restore. Um, here, meeting compliance, uh, compliance uh, requirements and retention goals. So, one thing that we can do is we can leverage the archive tiering in object storage, such as uh, Amazon S3, Glacier, Azure Archive, stuff like that, to meet those long-term retention goals and not keep everything, you know, on-prem. We can put it up in the cloud as well to kind of, you know, get that capacity tier and offload it to that, that archive cold storage. Recovery, despite storage and staff constraints. So, one of the major challenges when it comes to restoring is time. Okay, so the RPOs, you know, uh, the RTOs, the time that it takes to recover, we want it as less as possible, right? So we've expanded our instant uh, recovery to instant disk recovery, you know, instant database recovery, you know, stuff like that to get that low RTO on what we're trying to restore. And of course, protecting company data at home. Uh, and the biggest here is while keeping costs in check, uh, you know, we want to make sure we're not breaking the bank uh, trying to meet all of these challenges. And inside of Veeam backup and replication, we can pretty much meet all five of these here while pretty much, you know, keeping the cost in check. Uh, here's a little slide of, well, you know, what I just went over when it comes time to those actual challenges. Again, 
with that CDP policy, uh, we can have an RPO of, of two seconds there. The reliable ransomware protection, leveraging that immutability option, sure backup, secure restore, uh, that long-term retention, uh, leveraging those archive tiers as Glacier uh, and Azure archives, the expanded instant recovery on the databases, on disk, you know, in the whole VM, stuff like that. And of course, uh, you know, it comes to that uh, other, I can't remember the last one there, my, my, uh, my apologies, but the Veeam powered uh, backup as a service and VR as a service, we can leverage those as well, since we partner uh, with companies that offer that, um, you know, using Veeam uh, as the software. So, recovery top challenges here meeting recovery slas so making sure you're meeting those slas for your recovery time objective which is your rto which is the time it takes you to recover and your rpos which is your recovery point objective which is the frequency you back up your data so if you are not meeting your slas right now uh, for your rtos and rpos again if you need a four hour rpo since you can only lose four hours of data you're able to set up, you know, a reoccurring job that will run every four hours to keep that RPO. And again, keeping your RTOs low, having that instant VM recovery option there, you know, to have that very low RTO time. Also doing replication, uh, real-time replication there, um, you know, to be able to turn on those replicas on your DR site to get that very low RTO time. You can do that all in, in one application called backup and, and recovery or backup and replication. Determining the best resource type. You know, we can go from whole VM restores all the way down to a certain file level restore or object level restore, looking into Active Directory and, and all of that stuff. So we can get very granular when it comes time to, to restore, not just the whole VM. Whole, the whole uh, application and granular recovery, again, it, we call it application aware processing. This is where we can leverage VSS, the volume shadow service in Windows to capture certain databases, okay? This is where we can look in, again, into Active Directory, DNS zones, group policy objects, uh, MySQL databases, um, Oracle databases, uh, Postgres, uh, SQL, uh, you know, on-prem exchange, all of that stuff, we're able to look into so we can actually dive into the databases itself inside of our Veeam Explorers and to be able to look at an attribute level or object level inside of those databases and restore just that particular attribute or object. And of course, uh, disaster recovery here, you're able to set up failover plans um, inside of our uh, backup and replication console for your uh, replicas that you have going to your DR site. Uh, you initiate the failover plan, it'll start turning on those um, VM or so, yeah, those replicas on your DR side uh, to get that up again to keep that low RTO time down. Okay, so after that, uh, we can jump into the demo here. Let me get it open real quick. Okay, so here uh, again, you know, adding in the inventory here, uh, real quick, I'll go over this before we get into the recovery. We have to add what we want to protect. If we're adding virtual infrastructure, you know, we just run through, we add the server. Again, we directly integrate into vSphere, Hyper-V, Nutanix, AHV, to where uh, if you want to protect any servers or VMs inside of that infrastructure, it's agentless. So we don't have to install an agent on every single virtual machine you have running inside of your vSphere, Hyper-V, or Nutanix. Uh, we directly integrate into it. So again, no agent needs to be installed. We add your backup infrastructure here. Uh, these are the repositories where you want to store it. Now, again, we're, we're storage agnostic, so you can bring pretty much any storage you want to the table. So if you have that direct attached storage with those 10,000, you know, uh, RPM SAS drives and those Windows servers, we can leverage that. If you have any Linux servers with repositories, you know, uh, in there as well, we can leverage that, that direct attached storage. Any network attached storage, uh, NFS shares, SMB shares, um, you know, dedupe devices here, we directly integrate in those to leverage the hardware um, dedupe instead of using Veeam for the software dedupe that it does. And of course, the object storage. Okay, we, I mean, again, any S3 compatible here, any iLand, uh, Wasabi, Backblaze, you know, Cloudy, and any of those S3 compatibles, uh, we're able to add those. And if they offer um, immutability, we're able to leverage that immutability to make those backup files immutable for X amount of days. Again, Amazon S3, Glacier, Snowball Edge, when it comes down to Microsoft 
pretty much the same thing, blob uh, storage uh, archive and also data box. Uh, we can do IBM Cloud and Google Cloud storage as well. So again, when it comes time to what storage you want to use, uh, pretty much you can bring any storage you want to the table. So after you add all that, you would set up your backup jobs here. Uh, again, if it's a virtual machine, you would just click here. You would pick the virtual machines you want to back up, um, you know, walk through the wizard, all of that stuff. And again, if you want a more uh, deeper uh, deep dive into this, um, you know, talk to that reseller or your vendor, um, you know, that's a partner with Veeam. We can get a demo set up, you know, and we can get a little deeper into how everything works and, and all of that stuff. But we can protect physical infrastructure as Windows computers. That could be servers or workstations. So if you have any laptops or road warriors or anything like that that you want to protect, we can throw an agent on there and, and have it have that backup sent back to the Veeam server on your repositories that you've added. We can even do uh, add it to an external hard drive so they can plug in an external hard drive. Once it's plugged in, the backup will start running, store it on there, automatically disconnect or eject that external hard drive to air cap it after the backup file is done. Uh, so we can leverage that as well. Any Linux computer, Mac computer, Unix, any file shares you might have on a NAS or a SAN, like a NetApp or Pure or anything like that, we can protect those as well. And of course, any Nutanix AHV uh, VMs. Um, so once you set up all of your jobs here, uh, now it's start time to looking at the actual recovery of your data. And one thing that I really like to hit on is, is the domain controller, okay? So if we come into our Veeam Explorers that I've talked a little bit about before with that attribute or object level, again, because we have that application aware processing turned on, we're able again to look into those certain databases, okay? Now, I'll open up my Active Directory here as well to kind of do a apples to apples comparison here once it pulls this database up. And right now what this is doing is we have this on our exagrid. So right now it's rehydrating all of that data, you know, and it's pretty much attaching or mounting that uh, Active Directory database that we have captured because we have um, that uh, application aware processing turned on the job. So as we can see here, it's mounted the database. We're able to look into this. So let me kind of square this down just a little bit so we can see both here. And here, as you can see, we go under corporate users, we look at employees, and it's pretty much, uh, you know, one-to-one uh, -one ratio here. So it, it pretty much mimics it. So what we can do is, let's just say, um, you know, Burton LaForest, he goes to lunch. For some reason, his account gets deleted. Uh, we have no idea why. Recycle bin's not turned on. So Burton comes back from lunch. He's trying to log into com his computer. It says user profile not found. He doesn't know why. So he contacts the help desk, right? And, um, you know, he says, hey, I can't log in my computer. So instead of having to recreate his profile, add all of his members of back because he has security groups in there, you know, or distribution lists or, you know, whatever's in his members of, or he's a Citrix user and he has a home profile path you know, whatever the case may be, you have to recreate his profile, make sure, you, you know, you add everything back, um, type in his email, you know, get his username and password, all of that stuff, right? So it would take forever to try to rebuild his profile in here, where uh, one thing that we can do is we can use this. But one other thing real quick, let's just say um, Brenna here, her last name changes, okay? So Brenna, her last name changes to Testington, okay? Um, for some reason, during the process, uh, I don't know, maybe you're working from home, your cat walks across the keyboard or something and basically makes her last name, you know, all kinds of messed up here. So her display name is, is, is messed up as well. So, you know, we come in here, the username is still the same. So she's able to log in just fine. But when she logs in, she sees that her display name is, is all messed up. So again, she calls the help desk, sends a ticket saying, hey, I need this fixed. You know, can you please help me out? Well, Let's just say you're already in here, okay, and you don't, you know, go in here and try to fix it. What we can do is we have this compare with production button. So we can hit this button here, and right off the bat, we already see Burton LaForest has been tombstoned, okay? Don't know why. We see Brenna Walski has been changed and, and moved, okay? Well, first off, Burton LaForest does not need to be tombstoned. So basically, we're just going to click this, and we're going to get a big green check and one-click restore. Now we can come back over here and let me make this a little bigger so I can right click and 
maybe I need it a little bigger here, sorry. Yep, there we go, right click, refresh. Now we see Burton LaForest is back. Uh, we can see everything is back to the way that this actually backup uh, restore point was, okay? Um, if you had any members of, uh, they would be in there as well. Look at the profile, if there was a profile path, it'd be in there as well. So again, takes what that backup value was, and puts it right back into your Active Directory like it never even left. Now, just say we only want to change certain attributes inside of, of a user profile, okay? We can do compare object attributes. We can see our backup value, and we can also see our production value here. So let's just say I just want to change this one attribute, okay, back to the backup value. So I would just click that, and now it has only changed that one value for Brenna Walski. Okay, again, at that attribute level. So we come here, we hit a refresh, we see Brenna Walski, but her display name is still messed up because we didn't uh, restore that attribute. Okay, now we could come back here and we could click this again and restore it from here. Or again, if we just want to restore everything, we would just hit restore two. And now Brenna Walski's profile should be right back to what the backup value was. So we come in here and we look. Now we can see her display name is back to normal. Now we can change it, you know, do whatever we need to. So a lot of use cases when it comes down to this, we also do group policy objects. So of course you would have more group policies in your environment instead of our demo lab. But let's just say someone goes into the default domain policy, adds a setting or changes a setting, you know, that's a big no-no. You never want to change the DDP in an organization. Something was done, it broke something. Instead of having to comb through all of those settings and try to figure it out, what you can do is the same exact thing. You can come here, you can click restore objects. It's going to restore this to the back to the way it was in this uh, backup value. And then it'll fix everything inside that was broken since that one setting has now been removed. So we can do DNS zones as well. We don't have DNS turned on our demo lab, but it would pop up here, which shows DNS zones. You'd be able to add a record level, an A record, C name, MX, you know, any type of record that's in your DNS. Uh, you would be able to do a one-click restore on those as well. Um, so again, when it comes down to that application-aware processing, looking into those certain databases, you know, we're able to um, leverage that as well. So if you have an on-prem exchange, we can do the same thing when it comes to an email. Now, if you're using Microsoft 365, we have a product called Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365 that can do the exact same thing that I'm about to show you here. It can do it for your whole office organization, okay? A Teams, OneDrive, um, uh, SharePoint, and Exchange Online, we're able to do a granular level restore uh, using these Veeam Explorers. So again, if you're interested in protecting your Microsoft 365 organization, definitely contact your reseller too. Uh, if you're in the Southeast commercial, I, I would love to give you a demo on that product. Um, I've used it again as an end user and um, it has saved me a lot of time um, when it comes time to restore. So uh, again, everything that I show you here, uh, we can do again for your Microsoft 365. Um, but we can basically drill down into, so let's look at Anthony here. Uh, we're gonna look into the inbox and we can see every email that Anthony has inside of this restore point. Now, one thing we can do is we can double click on this and we can open this email up, okay? We can see the email, the contents of it, but we can also capture the message headers and look at these. So now, instead of restoring a quote unquote fishy email, um, you know, we can kind of do some due diligence behind it. We can go to mxtoolbox.com. We can run this against an IP blacklist. We can look at the domains, right? Um, we can copy and paste all of this into Microsoft message header analysis to get a nice, excuse me, nice readable format. So we can do some really security or forensics behind it before restoring this, okay? So once you've done all of that, uh, it's, it's time to restore. So now again, we can click this and we can just do this one click restore. So now here, we're gonna click this. It's going to go back to Anthony's mailbox. It's gonna keep time date stamp. So it's gonna be covered up by hundreds of emails if it's an old one, um, you know, and he's gonna have to go search for it. or you have an option here to send to. This is going to send him a new email with this email. Put it at the top of this box. Say you have one unread, all of that stuff. Say you have a legal or HR issue, you can hold down the control key. You can multi-click which ones you want. Export as a PST file, save as a raw message file, 
send it over to the HR legal department. They have all the information they need to do an investigation, you know, stuff like that. Um, say this, say one person like a CTO or something needs this email, uh, you can click this, hit send to, type in the target mailbox being your CTO, and then you would be able to send this email directly from Anthony's mailbox to your CTO's mailbox as a new email, and now he has the email that he needs. So again, when it comes to Exchange Online, uh, SharePoint Online, Teams and OneDrive, we can do this exact same thing that I showed you uh, today. We can do that uh, using our Veeam backup for Microsoft 365 product. There's also a lot of new features that are in V6 that came out uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, Self-service user portal, backup copy jobs to archive object storage, stuff like that. So it's really great product. If you're interested in it, you know, please reach out to that reseller to get a demo and pricing on that. Um, okay, so back here, again, with that application aware processing turned on, uh, we're able to do that recovery at a granular level. Now, when it comes time to actually do full restores, okay, um, we have a few options here. So here's that instant recovery, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, we can do it for uh, vSphere, Hyper-V, and Nutanix. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you in vSphere just because it's, it's faster. Uh, it's a faster environment inside of our demo lab. Uh, but everything that I show you in vSphere, we're able to do in Hyper-V as well. Um, we can do that instant disk recovery if you just need that C drive up and running or, you know, a volume that got corrupted. We can just get that spun up and mounted. Um, we can do a restore the entire VM if need be. Restore guest file. So since this is a file server, we could open this up uh, here again with a Veeam Explorer. Uh, I'll have this up and running in, in the background for you, but it pop up. It'll show all the volumes and you'd be able to restore at a, a file level. So. I'll let that run real quick. Um, we also can restore these to the big three cloud providers as um, uh, we have Amazon EC2 here. Um, we have you know, Microsoft Azure here. Um, we have uh, Google Cloud. So say we need to restore this directly to Microsoft Azure. So basically what it's going to do is run through, we're gonna connect to our subscription here Okay, we're going to go to the data center that we're in, East US. We're going to pick the VM size, the resource group we want to add it to, or we can create a new resource group, what network security group we want to add it to, you know, stuff like that. The, the same stuff we would walk through when we were creating a VM inside of portal.azure.com, go to VMs, create VM. Here are all the different sizes. You know, uh, we can look at the, the storage account here, you know, we want to go ahead and do all this here. Um, you know, the resource group that will want to put it in again, we can create a new one. So basically it'll walk you through the wizard to create it. And then it's going to start creating that VM on your Azure uh, subscription up there. And, you know, basically take this file server and migrate it up there. So you can also use this as that migration tool. Now, when it comes into actually looking at the files, uh, see we have an F drive here. We have an HR share inside of that F drive. And as you can see, uh, we will be able to restore these, overwrite and keep. Overwrite is exactly what it says. It's going to delete the old one, replace it with the uh, restore point. We also have a keep option. What's gonna happen is it's going to append the file name with restored hyphen and then the file name. So that is what the keep option does. We can copy to and paste it somewhere. Uh, we can also view it inside of the Windows Explorer here to have a nice little view so you can go in and check the properties out, do whatever you need to in that Windows Explorer. Um, so again, getting very granular with those restores. Now, when it comes time to the instant recovery option here, basically uh, what we're going to walk through is we're, the machine here. This is the one that we're going to do. We have two different options here. We have restore to the original location or restore to a new location or with different settings. So we're going to choose this one today um, to, to walk through. Next, we're gonna pick the destination that we wanna put it, okay? I'm gonna change the, the VM name here just for demo purposes. I'm gonna leave it on the host, the VM folder, and the resource pool. I'm gonna change the re resource pool to our demo station. And then um, what we're gonna do is, here's that secure restore option, okay? This is where, again, it's gonna use that onboard antivirus that's installed on the server, okay? If we have access to the command line of that, what, what it'll do is, 
it will start scanning again for it'll start scanning for that malware now this is not a hundred percent proof okay this is if your antivirus will catch this during the scan it will you have two options so if malware is found proceed with recovery but disable network adapters or abort vm recovery then we would be able to go back to a, a later restore point instead of a day we could go back five days and do the same thing and check to see if that's a good restore point right so we can abort it all together um, or we can say, you know what, I just need to look at something so we can recover it, but I don't want it connected to the network. I can go in with a local user or a cache profile, something like that, and look at what I need to, and then I'll just kill it after that. Now, I'm not going to do this today, but this is where that secure restore is. So you can type in a reason here for, you know, any, any uh, audit trail or anything like that. You get a nice little summary of what's going on here. I'm not going to connect the VM to the network today, but I'm going to power it on. So after all that said and done, I'm going to hit finish. Now this is going to start mounting it to the Veeam server itself. Okay, we're not allocating resources to uh, the actual uh, your actual VMware or Hyper-V environment. Okay, what's happening right now is it's mounting that restore point on the Veeam server and it is using the Veeam server's resources to uh, get this up and running. So if you have four vCPUs and eight gigs of RAM added to your, your uh, Veeam server, that is what it's using. It's not reallocating eight CPUs and 32 gigs of RAM because this is a file server and it's pretty beefy. We're not allocating resources in your vCenter for that, okay? Um, it's just running in the RAM cache on the Veeam server itself. Now. That being said, uh, it, the, the VM will run slower than what it's used to, right? Because now we're only using four vCPUs and eight gigs of RAM because that's what's on the Veeam server. So yes, it's gonna run a little slower, but it's giving you a really long uh, RTO time, or sorry, really short RTO time there uh, to get this back up and running in your environment, okay? So here, uh, we can see if this is already showing up in our inventory in our VMware. Uh, we can see that we're at the Windows splash screen here. I'm going to go ahead and get this opened up real quick. And we can see here it's starting to log into Windows. So what we could do is let's just say there's a use case here for our file server. We, you know, at blue screen, maybe, you know, Tuesday night Windows uh, updates go out. Wednesday morning, you come in, your file server is blue screened. Okay. Now, instead of having to roll it back and it takes forever because it was a feature update, or, um, uh, you know, you have a six or 10 terabyte file server, you can't do a full VM restore because it would take four hours. Um, having this option here, getting this up and running, say you have a DFS namespace, you can go ahead and throw this in your DFS namespace. Uh, you know, and, and get this uh, up and running. So now all of your users have access to this file server, again, getting that very, very short RTO time of getting this file server back up and running. So as you can see here now, uh, I'm at the actual login screen. I'd be able to throw a control alt delete. Uh, I, since I didn't connect the network adapters, you know, I, I'm not gonna have network access to it. Um, in your case, I would keep the network adapters on, but as you can see now, I'm able to type in a password. I don't know the administrator password, but as you can see, I can interact with this, you know, all, all of that stuff. So let's just say uh, you got the old one back up and running and you don't need this one anymore. So what, what, what exactly can you do? Like, what are your options to get this removed, right? Well, as you can see up here, we have this instant recovery tab now. So everything you have running in instant recovery would be under here. Now, when it comes time to uh, remove this, we have a couple different options. We have migrate to production. Okay, let's just say you want to keep this one. Now we're gonna leverage uh, certain technologies. VMware is gonna be vMotion. And we're going to migrate what we have here to production. And now it's going to commit this restore point to your vCenter and allocate all the resources and disk space that it needs for this file server to work. Or we can hit stop publishing because you were able to have this up and running roll back the old one, get the new one turned back on, and it works fine. So now we can say, you know what, let's stop publishing. We're going to hit that. We're going to say, yep, I'm going to stop this. We come back over here, and we'll see in the next 15 to 20 seconds, this thing is going to fall out of our inventory like it never even existed. Okay, so now you can go back, turn the old one on. 
you know, and um, everything is running back to normal. So with that instant VM recovery option, again, you're able to get stuff up and running as quickly as possible. So your, your business can still uh, be profitable, right? Instead of being down for a very long time and not meeting certain SLAs, um, you know, in, in, in your business, um, now you have this option here to where you can have a very sh short RTO meet those SLAs of getting your environment back up and running. So as you can see now here, um, it is out of our environment here, like it never even existed. We can go back to the old file server um, in our production resource pool, turn it back on, you know, and everything is, is back up and running. And here, um, everything has been unmounted successfully. We hit OK. That instant uh, recovery tab up here is gone. And now you can go uh, back to uh, your, your daily routine. So when it comes to the actual recovery of it, again, I think is where Veeam uh, shines from, you know, other, other backup uh, solutions. Um, you know, a backup solution, it does exactly what it does. You have a source, you have the backup solution, and you have a target where you put it. Now, uh, I think where Veeam differs is the restore options, where we can restore directly to cloud. We have that instant VM recovery. We have that application where processing to look into certain databases to restore very granular inside of those, um, you know. So again, if any of this looks interested, interesting, you know, and you want more information on it, please reach out to that reseller. Um, you know, they can definitely get something set up. But uh, for the demo itself, that is uh, pretty much all that I have uh, when it comes to the, the 30 minutes. I know I'm a minute over right now, so I do apologize. If you want to use our community edition for any testing or something, go to my.veam.com here, create an account. You'll have access to all of this stuff here as our community hub, our forums, the resource library, all of our top tools here. You can download the product for our Microsoft 365, our backup and replication. You know, there's some other ones in there. Uh, again, you, for the backup and replication piece, you can protect 10 workloads for free. Um, for our Microsoft 365, you can protect 10 users for free. Um, you know, so if you definitely want to test it out, uh, take a look at that. But other than that, um, I have nothing else. I do hope you guys have a great day. And I do want to say uh, thank you. I'll be hanging around for the next 10 minutes. If any questions come up, uh, you know, please uh, shoot them over to me. I'll try to get them answered for you as quick, quickly as possible. But other than that, again, thank you guys for joining in. And um, again, if you're interested, please reach out. I'd love to uh, give you guys a demo and, and talk more on this product. So uh, thank you and everyone have a good rest of the day and the rest of the week.